why would you want to create a blog that is AI generated? Oh! Oh! Yeah! The tools I'm going to be using for this automation are the same tools I have been using for my AI automated print on demand series. Check that out if you haven't. Link down in the description. Thank you for using my links. It helps me keep making videos. Let's jump right into it. So you'll need to log into your make.com account, create a new scenario. I'm going to start by showing you the automated blog I've created for Medium. Each platform is slightly different and requires a slightly different setup depending on whether or not they allow image hosting or whether you have to host your own images. So I'll walk you through on those platforms where you have to store your own, how I've set up my Google Photos to facilitate that for me. All of my auto-blogging scenarios consist of two elements. One would be the OpenAI module, first generating a topic, then generating an image, then from those generating the entire article, and then the module of whatever blogging platform I'm wishing to publish to, in this case, Medium. Let's run through what it looks like to create this auto blogger from scratch. I'm gonna back up, create a new scenario. So the first module that we're going to add will be OpenAI. And we'll use create a completion. First thing we're going to do is create the title or subject. I'm going to cancel out of this and configure it later. And I'm going to chain three together, click the little plus, add another one. This one will generate an image, cancel. And let me add the last one, which is another text completion or a chat completion, actually. They recently changed the API. We used to select prompt completion, now it's chat completion. So for the first one, I'm going to select model 3.5 turbo. And the reason it's a little bit less expensive to use 3.5 turbo, it's going to do just fine for my titles uh, in general. And for most of my ads and product copy on all my other automations, this is what I use. Saves a little bit of money. Add message, role system, and message content. Come up with a random topic about earning passive income online. Let's see the advanced settings. Okay, max tokens, I'm going to go with 100. And you probably know by now, but if you don't, tokens is how many characters it can feed back to you. So I'm basically saying you can give me a maximum of 100 characters to come up with this title. Temperature, not important. Number, I only want to get one completion back. So I type one. Everything else looks good. Response format text looks good. Now I'm going to go to my second module to generate an image, and we are going to choose, I'm going to choose Dolly 3. Dolly 2 is a little bit simpler, and for our prompt, what I'm going to want to do is create an image about, and I'm going to reference the title that was just generated. So let's say it says, you know, stalking casinos to earn that extra dime or something, then it should, in theory, generate an image about a casino. So message content, create an image about choices, message content. Now let's show the advanced settings. And well, why not, let me bump it up. Uh, the new Dolly 3 allows you to generate bigger images, which is kind of cool. This is for a blog, not for a print on demand. I might just leave it standard. So I'm gonna leave that standard style vivid response format URL. And actually, I think for medium, I do believe we're going to need to change it to image file. Then let's create our third completion. And this one, I'm going to select a different model. I'm actually going to select GPT-4. And the reason I find this one a little bit better at longer form writing and really doing a better job with a, you know, just a longer body of text. Let's do messages, add role system, generate a blog post about, and then I'm going to reference the title again, choices, message, content in 2000, I'll just go ahead and say in 2500 characters or less. So let me go to advanced settings. That also means my tokens are going to be much more. So let's go ahead and give it 3,000 tokens. 
Then let's do only oh, need one. Everything else should be the same. Response format text, good to go. Now, move these a bit. And let's add the next phase. So the next one that we're going to grab will be the medium module. Grab that, and we are going to first upload an image. And the order kind of matters. You need to upload the image, and then when we go to create the actual post, it can reference and grab that image. So right here, we're going to do this, and I'm going to have it grab the image that was generated here. If memory serves, it needed to be image file instead of the normal URL that I use. We'll find out here in a second when I run the process. So now I'm going to create a second medium module, create a post, and I'm going to have it do the same thing, reference the title, choices, message, content. Oops. See how that says number three, and when I hover over it, that one pulsates. I accidentally just dumped the blog into the title. So you got to be careful about that. Scroll down. There we go. Choices, message, content. And now that's the number one. So it's referencing the title. And I want my content to be the number three. So you can see when I hover over it, that's referencing the generate a blog post module that I made. And I'm going to set my status to draft. I don't advise ever just publishing it immediately because you usually need to curate these posts a little bit to make sure that they, they come across well and that the content is what you want. And I almost forgot in the content, we also need to reference the, the image that was uploaded right here. So, and how we do that, we're going to use HTML. So I'm going to say image source equals and put some quotes around it, and I'm going to grab the URL from the medium upload an image module, put it right there, put quotes around it, and that should allow us to embed the image at the top of the article. Close, save, now let's run this and see what happens. So we can see here that it has returned a title, the popularity and potential of NFT rentals, earning passive income in the digital art space. That's definitely something I've done before. All right, so it went all the way through the workflow. Let's go over to my blog. Popularity and potential of NFT rentals. There it is. And there we go. There's my AI generated graphic at the top. Now I can go through, edit, Usually these are not formatted too well, so you have to separate out, space it the way you want, add different graphics. The way I handle my automated blogging, at least for my primary businesses, I never just let it rip. I come in and curate. By the time I'm done editing, it's basically my article. And probably about 50% of these I'll never publish. I'll just trash. If it publishes something that is not something I've ever done, I'm really not going to vouch for it. However, I'm going to create kind of an Amazon product promotion, you know, blog here pretty soon. I say pretty soon within the next few months, and I'm just going to let anything rip to that. For that, I'm not going to put my own face as a brand on it, and therefore I don't really care if I just automatically publish as many blogs as I can to see if I can sell cool Amazon products through links. The last thing I need to do is put my blog on a schedule. So here where it says every 15 minutes, I want to run it once a day. I'm going to create a new blog every day, and I'm going to put it out there at 8 a.m. There we go, 8 a.m. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it on and click Save, and now it's going to be running automatically for me every day. That concludes this lesson for setting up an automated medium blog. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this video and you found it useful. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when I make new videos. And join me on my next video where I'm going to show you how to set up a blogger automated blog. I'll walk you through how to set up an AI automated blogging system for the blogger platform. Open up your make.com account. And if you haven't seen my previous videos where I walk through the specific details of prompting and setting up the first modules, go ahead and check that out. I've got a link down in the description. So what we're going to do, this is basically the same setup in all of these when it comes to the OpenAI modules. All of them will generate a subject, then they're gonna generate an image, 
then they're going to generate an entire blog, and then they're going to publish it to your platform. In this case, Blogger, and because Blogger doesn't have image hosting, or if it does, it's not available in the module. Like there's, when you go to add a new Blogger module, there is not an option to upload an image and it's not available in the create a post section. So I've adapted by uploading the image to my Google Photos and then taking it from Google Photos and embedding it via HTML in my blog post. Right now I'm going to backtrack a little and we're going to add this module from scratch. So let me delete it and unlink. So now we're going to add a new module. You're going to search for Google Photos, select Google Photos, and you will get this list right here. So there's something kind of peculiar to Google Photos. I got this message the first time I did it. If you've never used the API to upload to your Google Photos before, what you're actually going to have to do is create an album via the API first. You can't upload an image until you have an album, and it's kind of counterintuitive. It cannot be an album that you've already created manually with Google Photos. It has to be an album that you created with the API. So the first thing we're going to do is create an album, and I'm going to give it a title. I just called mine Blogger, but you can call it whatever you want. And what you're going to do is first you're going to run this process, create a new blank album. Now you have a place for your image to go. Once you've created the album and allowed that process to run, it creates the album on your Google Photos. Now we can delete this and now we can add a photo. So let's see, where was that? List media, get a media, upload a media item. That's what they're calling it in Google Photos. And I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to select Open AI so that it grabs the file from my image module right there. And then let's see, we have to select our album. I've got my album blogger. If you haven't created it yet, there will be nothing there. And what will happen is when you try to upload for the first time, it will fail if you don't have an album for that photo to go in. So I selected my album. Now we're going to link these two. And then in blogger, how I want to set up my my blogger account first you're going to connect just like any other system i do believe here yeah it's a it's a sign in as opposed to having to fetch an api so you're going to sign into your blogger account then you're going to select the blog that you've created that you wish to upload to here's where we fill it out this part is very similar to the rest of the modules for every other blogging platform so let's go through a quick rundown of how to set up your blog post module i've resized it so it's not hiding behind my pretty face so you will select your blogger module you're going to select the blog that you want to connect to if you have multiple they will be displayed in a list here and then where it has title what you're going to want to do, put your cursor down and you'll get the flyout menu and you're going to want to select the results that are returned from the module that you want to plug into the title. So in this case, I happen to know this is our title module right here. How can I tell? It's a little hard to see, but next to each module be, will be a number kind of out to the side and that is how you can tell. So right here, the number one module is this right here, number one. There's number two, there's number 14. So we will go to number one, and I'm going to go under Choices, Message, and Content. And that's where we got our title result. That's going to plug in the title to the title field. Then we're going to go to Content, and I'm going to go to 14, which is our blog post generator. And same thing, Choices, Message, Content. Oops, I accidentally selected too soon. Be careful if you do that. So Choices, Message content. And there we go. It's set to draft state. If I want to publish to a date in the future, I can select that or select a different date. I'm going to leave everything as it is. And then let's run this and see what happens. There we go. Okay, so my process completed. Everything looks like it went through. I'm going to go over to my blogger platform and I'm going to refresh. There we go, exploring the art of cannabis and then the new post exploring the therapeutic benefits of cannabis. This is kind of an example where, you know, I'm going to probably go in and retitle it. If you find that it's doing certain redundant things like every article begins with exploring, you can actually go back into your prompt and I recommend negative prompting. If you don't know what that is, that's going to be where you go right here 
and I've got my title prompt, come up with a random cannabis related post and format it in the style of a blog post title, dash, do not use the word exploring. Boom. And that is a way that you can effectively curtail any redundancy that keeps happening. So let's run this one more time. And I'm going to time warp this one. All right. Looks like the process finished. Refresh again. So let's open up the article, see what we have. See, it's all nicely formatted. One thing you might notice, especially if you watch the previous videos about auto blogging, I never selected an image to pass into my create a blog post module. And the reason is that I just haven't found a way for that to work in Blogger. When I try to format that field as HTML, it's, it's not really working. So the way we have to add that here, we've already uploaded it to our Google Photos. So if I want it to be at the top of my blog, I'm going to put my cursor down. I'm going to go to the image menu item, and we are going to go to our Google Photos, which is automatically connected. And here are some of the photos that I've uploaded. So let me just select that one. That one's the one that was the most recent upload. Those are the ones that are made today. Select that. Select the size I want. So we'll do a large alignment center. OK. And then let's preview. And that's it. If you want to add images to your blogger, you're going to have to do it manually. But if you've created them in your AI process, but if you've created them in your AI process, you will have an image there waiting for you. And that's it. That's how you set up an AI automatic blogging workflow for the blogger platform. everybody, I was able to tweak my auto blogging prompt to where I'm able to get a nicely formatted article. If you haven't seen that video where I show how to set up an automated AI blogger for Medium, be sure to check that out. I've got a link down in the description. What I did was add a little bit more instruction to the create a completion module where we were creating the entire blog post. And I'm going to bring up a bigger version and I've also got it down in the description for easy copy paste action. What I said was add returns using HTML, and then I literally spelled out break, break, every few sentences to break up the blog into paragraphs. If you come up with any numbered lists, you should appropriately space them apart using HTML, break, and indent them properly. Let's take a look at the results that came about. This is the blog that it made, and this is without me editing anything. Now, I haven't published this yet because I still want to go in and make sure this is saying something that I want to say, since this is actually my main automated lifestyle blog. And yeah, it's, it's basically saying what I'm doing right now with Medium, which is attempting to monetize a blog. So maybe this one will fly. And then I also tested this on Blogger, which I'm about to make another video. And as you can see, it worked for Blogger too. Perfect. So this is really interesting because I tried doing something like this before I even made my first autoblogger video, but I couldn't get the output to come out right. And I think the only difference is that I really drove the point home and I repeated myself. I've noticed sometimes when you're doing negative prompting or things like that, sometimes you have to really drive the point home for the AI to actually pick it up. I'm not sure if that's what happened here, but Maybe. Have you experienced stuff like this when you're adding your prompt? You tell it to do something, it seems to ignore you, but then if you say it more than once or in different ways, it seems to work? Let me know. Chime in in the comments. I'd be interested to know what your results are. And if you expand upon this, of course, that would be awesome too. Let me know what you come up with. Here are two other very important considerations for crafting your prompts. I've mentioned it in my previous video, but I'm going to reiterate it here. The first is tone. How do you want your blog to come across? Do you want it witty, authoritative, witty and authoritative maybe, satirical, educational, tabloid editorial? How about product manual? If you can see where I'm going with this, you can really use your imagination, but how you describe it in telling it to adopt a certain tone is what you can expect for it to try to imitate when producing your article. Second would be, how long do you want it to be? If you don't specify a certain length, sometimes it'll only crank out a couple sentences. Other times it'll crank out a couple pages. How long do you really want it to be? If you specify, you'll help control the length and word count. 
other things to consider that are very important, and this is part of my general prompting for anything, print on demand, you name it, make sure to tell the AI not to use ampersands and specify afterwards for it to use and instead. This prevents headaches and future support cases from using and, which will screw up the API passing from system to system. show you today how to set up an AI automated blog for your Shopify store. It's probably the easiest workflow out of all of them so far, so let's check it out. For this, just like the rest of my auto bloggers, we are going to be using Make, so you'll want to sign into your Make account. Link down below if you don't already have one. Thank you for using my link. Helps me keep making these videos. And once I sign in, I'm going to go into my scenarios, and then I have my AI auto blogger scenarios set up right here right at the top, and let's go into Shopify. So as you can see, pretty simple. It's just the OpenAI modules as I've been using them and one Shopify module because it will allow the upload of the image and the creation of the text in Shopify. Only need that module, don't need any additional image storage modules or anything like that. So let's see how I have it set up. In this one, I did something a bit different uh, that I told you guys about in my last video. Instead of doing like a clothing blog or something for my print-on-demand shop, I decided since I was rolling with science-themed things that I would do a science-themed blog. And so what I've done is I have three modules, all uh, creating a chat completion, which is now what is required. What it looks like, I select 3.5 Turbo. You can also select GPT-4. It's just a little bit more expensive to use chat GPT-4. And I find for this particular use, it's fine uh, for generating the title using 3.3. So I'm saving myself a bit of money by using 3.5 to generate the title versus 4, which I'm going to use in the blog creation itself because it's a little bit better with the overall creation of really long, intricate text. So I generate my title where I say, come up with a fascinating topic about science or a scientific discovery. Do not use parentheses around the title. Do not use parentheses anywhere in the text. Do not use words unveiling or unraveling. That's something that I had to add because when I first started this going, like the first five articles were all coming out with unveiling, unraveling, unveiling. So sometimes it will get really redundant on a word and you'll have to come in here and negative prompt it so that it doesn't do that. So that generates my title. Then I need to generate an image. I'm using Dolly 3 because its images are just way superior to Dolly 2. So even though it takes a little bit more money, definitely worth it. And I like the new landscape aspect ratio that you're able to choose right there. So I just say generate an image related to, and then what I've referenced right here is my title module. So it knows to build the title or to build the image based on the title that it generated. So it generates something that looks like what this blog post should be about. And then next, here comes the meat and potatoes, my blog post module. And right here, oh, I've still got it set to 3.5. So make a liar out of me. But four definitely does it just a little bit better. And you want to select that. Oops. <laughs> anyway, so generate an authoritative blog post about one. And then I reference the message again, because that's once it comes up with a topic, now it needs to build the blog post in 3000 words or less needs to be 1500 words. Uh, basically, I don't want it to spit out anything way shorter. And then I say, and should not include ampersand anywhere in the text, always use and instead in parentheses, add returns using HTML, and then I physically give it the HTML break break every few sentences to break up the blog into paragraphs. If you come up with any numbered lists, you should appropriately space them apart using HTML, and I give it another example of a break, and indent them properly. How did I arrive at all that? Trial and error, trial and error. At first, it was spitting out a bunch of stuff that I would really have to go edit. All of this has created a situation where now it pretty much, I can just let it fly. I don't worry about what it's going to put out there. So feel free to copy that. Any of you want to take that and expand on it, it is much welcome. Feel free to uh, comment and let me know how you've improved it. 
So that's that's it. That's the main meat and potatoes. And then here we are at the Shopify module. You need to connect your Shopify store. I wanted to create a blog called Did You Know? So I select my blog. Then I plug in my title, which that's done the way it is in every other module. You put your cursor down and then you're able to select the response that you want, which in this case is down here. And you can see when I'm hovering over the appropriate module, it's flashing. So I want to grab the title, which will be found under Choices, Message, Content. And that's what I've plugged in right there. And then I add by Funkerbot. In this case, I want people to know it's an auto-generated blog and that it's being fun. And Funkerbot happens to be the name of the chat bot that I'm using on my website for customer support. Then we have Body HTML, where I am going right here. And you can see that module back there kind of hiding. It's pulsating when I hover over it. We want to get the generated blog to put in the body, which will be found in the same place, choices, message, content. And now it plugs in all of that. Author, I put in, then I put Funkerbot for my author. Article is published equals yes. If you want to publish into draft state and curate these, you need to make sure to mark that no. And then under tags, you can add different tags if you want to facilitate that in your blog as well. I didn't add any yet. And then under image, this is where we have to call the data that is returned right here. So we're going to go to this data and right there, file data. Now it's calling file data here because specifically on this module, I did not return a URL. That's important. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to all my videos, for these blogger videos, the images are sometimes returning image files that we use, whereas in my automated print-on-demand and really 90% of the other things that I do with this module, I am selecting URL. But in this case, we are actually passing a file, and that file is what gets uploaded right here in the Shopify module under Image, Data, File Data. And that's it. Hit OK, and let's push this over to my Shopify shop and see how it goes. All right, so let's go check out my shop. Let's go to my blog. Ooh, that is like straight out of Lovecraft, boys. I love that imagery. Potential of artificial photosynthesis in, we'll see what the hell it's saying here. Solving the energy crisis by Funkerbot. Okay, so I mean, this is pretty cool. So I'm going to be incorporating these, uh, probably going in forward into different e-com websites that I'm doing this kind of tangential subject idea. I'm going to set this to run on a schedule which I have, you know, really kind of a daily schedule for these blogs. And that's it. Publishes a new one every day. And once we get signed in, I'm going to go over to my auto blogger scenarios, select the scenario that I want, which is the Tumblr scenario. Boom. AI auto blogger templates. And there is Tumblr. And as you can see, it's every bit as simple as the Shopify blog. There's only one module needed instead of multiple modules. And it's kind of the same idea. I set up my title, come up with a witty article about anything written in the style of a lewd, crude, street slang dude. I don't know, that's stupid. Just something I wanted to test out. Then we've got our image generator, same as all the others. If you haven't seen those videos, check it out. Then we have our, wait, before I move on, then we've got our image generator, same as all the others. Uh, with one exception, this one actually, I want to return a URL as the response format. So in some of the other bloggers, I've had to return a file. This one, we're going back to URL like we normally use. And then create the blog post, same thing. If you haven't seen how to set that up, Watch some of my previous videos where I walk through that in more detail. Let's cut straight to the Tumblr module. So I created an account on Tumblr. I connected it. I have my C.W. Morton blog because once you, you know, create a blog on Tumblr, I guess you have to select it. Then 
this is a little bit unfamiliar to me. So I guess on Tumblr, you have to create a type of post. It's not like a hybrid. Most of these are kind of assumed that you might have images and text all together. And so it's just one field. Here we have to select text, quote, chat, link, photo. So that's that's something that's unique to Tumblr. And I haven't really played with this to test it out. Like if I select photo, I assume that it's only going to pass a photo post and there will be no point in generating the blogs. And then I assume if I create text, well, what about the the photos? So one thing that I tried is in the body, I tried to insert the URL and we'll check out what happens real quick. So we are going to create a title or grab the title rather from the title module. There we go. Choices, message. Oops, accidentally. Fat fingered that um, content choices message content so that takes my title plugs it into the title then we're going to grab the body and here is where I'm going to attempt um, yeah grab the URL of the image and then I'm going to go down to the module that generated go up to the module that generated the actual full blog post click on content there we go state published. If I want to add any tags, I can add some, but I'm just going to leave that alone. There we go. Publish on HTML format. And let's see what happens. I'm going to patch that like that. Save it. Run the process. And while it's running, I'm going to go sign into Tumblr, which I haven't done in a couple of days. Am I still signed in? No, I can't tell. Nope. Log in. It's not that password, but it's got to be that password. Yep. All right, let's see. It finished, so it looks like it posted successfully. All right. All right, so let me check out what it posted. Click on my blog. The Hilariously Outrageous Guide to Street Eats, bro. Yo, 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 you chillin' brohemes? All right, fam, get ready. This is definitely the dumbest street slang I've ever read in my life. But this is fun, you know? Where is my image? There it is. So it, it posted it as a URL. Unfortunately, it's looking like you're going to have to go with either or. It's going to have to be the image or the text, one or the other, but you're not going to be able to, uh, to get it to crank out both maybe. So let's try that. Let me try to do an image post real quick and see what happens. So got URL. Let's select image. Let's see what it asks for. Okay, it's asking for a link. So that'll be the URL. We'll just call it Dover's. Why not? And for the link, I'm going to grab the link from my image generation module to data URL and hit OK. Oh, and then saying upload photo uh, via external URL. Huh. Oh, so these are two different links. This is a click-through URL, so maybe you can turn the photo into a link, which might be very useful for affiliate marketing, by the way. If I can just turn Im any image this generates into a clickable link and share my affiliate links right there, huh? 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 All right, cool. So this is going to be the field that is calling for the photo that we generated. So let me save that. Give it a save. Let's fire it up again.
All right, it posted. Let's check out Tumblr again. I'm going to refresh my posts, and there we go. An image with the caption, Dubers, is the tune matter? <laughs> All right, it's some kind of a punk brawl going on there. But as you can see, it took the image, uploaded my image, and had I wanted the image to be a clickable hyperlink, I bet it could be. In fact, let me try that again, making it a clickable hyper image. And notice, if I'm just going to be pushing images, then let's get rid of some of these modules. I just don't need them. I'm going to kill that, I'm going to kill that, leave these linked. I'm going to change this, and we're going to turn that into a generate an image. Make sure these are set up the way I want. Dolly 3. Cute kitten photo realistic. Now, let's make sure the rest is right. Show advanced settings. I'm going to do standard. 1024, 1024, vivid URL, check, we are good. In Tumblr, I need to change this. Since I changed my modules around, it's now grabbing something else. So I'm gonna to go to data, URL, there we go. Anytime you delete or change your modules, sometimes you're going to need to go in here and change those around because if you can look on the corner of the module are these little numbers, that's what it's actually uh, connected to. Not the actual module itself, but the, the place where it is. So sometimes you're going to need to go in and modify those if you delete anything. So there we go. Let's run this puppy. That'll make it go a little bit faster since it only has to generate an image for us now. There's the cute face little kitten. Morning, I am testing my new toy, Blogify. I want to take the video that I just uploaded yesterday to YouTube and turn it into a blog. My dashboard, and when I go to my settings, you can see when I scroll down, I've already connected my Medium account, which is where I want to publish. So I'm going to click on Blogs, Create Blog, and then I do believe that's the URL already. Let me make sure that is the, the video that I want to grab. Yep, that's it. So, blog size large, blog tone. We've got all these different options. Let's see. Engaging. I'm just going to leave it at engaging. Why not? English and then autopilot. Let's see what autopilot I think is where it just generates it as is. So let's go through maybe both of these and see what the different results are. So writer's point of view will be first person because I want this to be writing as me, just like with my videos. Opt in for affiliate commission beta. Not even sure what that is. I haven't put in affiliate links. Maybe it's their own, but we'll see. All right, blog cover image, content images. Hmm. I'm hoping it generates some, but if it doesn't, we'll see what happens. So I'll say publish in medium and save in drafts. I don't want to just let that rip. And I won't send it anywhere else. I've connected my Twitter and my LinkedIn, but let's see what this does. I'm going to let it generate the whole thing. And I really have no lo I really have no idea how long this will take considering that is like a 12 minute video. Okay, we're at 10%, so Hopefully it won't take it so long since essentially it just needs to scrub and transcribe. And I think a computer can do that much faster than a human. Let's do a little fast forward, shall we? Ooh, putting the final touches on your blog. Let's view the generated blog.
Yeah, so it, it needs a little bit of work, but I mean, it looks like it's almost complete. Bloggy. <laughs> it doesn't... That might be a matter of my pronunciation, as a matter of fact. It is trying to, to read my voice. All right, so that, that's going to need a little bit of work before I let it rip. Now I want to test the other. Let's see what happens if I go through, they call it co-pilot mode, where apparently I get options in the creation. So we're going to do that same video. Oops. Let me grab that URL. Let's do another one. Log size, large, engaging, same. This time on co-pilot and first person. Leave everything else the same. Save in drafts. And we'll look at that here in a second. Because I assume it's also put it on medium. Okay, while we're generating that, let me check out my medium account. There's nothing in drafts yet. So we shall see. Maybe there's one more step before I get it to go over to a medium. Okay, so it says medium in two minutes. I don't know what that means. There's a little option right here in two minutes. Does that mean it hasn't published yet? I guess I'll find out. All right, so now we have continue with Copilot. Shopping for license, lifetime license software. I don't see any immediate way to um, uh, select or edit that. Okay, well then I can edit right there, which is just fine. Go Zen Growth Boost dot space Absolute offers. And then how do I read what is under these? I guess that's the outline. Those are talking points. Create talking points. Generate content. Interesting. This mode will allow you to build a more well-defined outline had I taken that opportunity. Let's see. I can go back. You can always go back and don't really see anything other than just those particular talking points. So let's, after it does that, it generates sub talking points. Generate content. And I'll be curious how different this is from the automatically generated content. And then of course, let's go back and let's edit what it created a second ago. Okay, yeah, in 17 seconds, so it's about to let that rip. Copy text, delete, edit blog. So you have the option to edit it before it publishes. But then I can, I put it in draft state, so I can always edit it on medium before I let it rip. And that's the most important part. Let's view the blog. So this is... A little bit better, honestly. So what I'm going to do, I'll let it go like this. Let's see what editing allows me to do. Can I put images in? I mean, other than, I don't see that this is HTML, but you definitely have the option. I'm going to go ahead when I'm building these out in Medium and upload the images there. All right, so let's go over into Medium.
and check out the stories and see what it has output. There we go. Shopping for lifetime licensed software app sumo. I might need to doctor this up a little bit, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. That's it. You've seen me rip a video into a blog, which is the entire reason that I bought this thing, really. So I'm going to play around with it for a little bit today and become more familiar with it. I've been looking for something to help me with generating YouTube videos with AI. And I've tried out a few things, and I found a platform that I kind of like for a few different reasons. It allows team members, collaboration. It's pretty much a great springboard for generating your basic idea and then building out and editing the complete video. It's more than just a, a one-off, you know, kind of generator. It actually has a video editor and a, a bunch of other cool features built in. Document to video, article to video, it generates video script. So I wanted to show you guys, I think it's pronounced Capwing, but I've heard people in their videos say something like Capwing. Not sure what the exact pronunciation is of this web service, but uh, Capwing is pretty awesome, and I just signed up for a year, so let's check it out. So you're going to want to open your web browser and go to the link down in the description. Thank you very much. And you'll want to create an account. You can try Capwing for free. If you want to, just click that button right there. It'll take you through a little, you know, account creation process. And then you'll be in. Let me go ahead and sign in. And their sign-in is a little bit different. Oh, wait. Unexpected error. Uh-oh. wonder what that means. There we go. Code sent. I just had to click on it twice. So their sign-in is a little bit different. It sends you like a little magic code, and then you have to use it to sign in. Boom. And here we are. When you first log into Capwing, you won't have all these projects. These are projects that I've created. I created a little YouTube channel to experiment with this. And I'm doing kind of a mix of things. At first, I thought I would just be able to crank out videos and have them be ready. And you can certainly make short videos that way. Kind of what I call info nuggets and stuff like that. But you can also use Capwing to build out larger videos. And today, I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you a short video generated with just a simple prompt and how to go in and edit it, clean it up. And then we're going to work on a longer video where I feed it prompt by prompt sections of what I want the video to be. And that's more of like a storyboard use of Capwing. So let's check it out. Let's create a new project. And you have the option right here down at the bottom. What you'll want to do, don't select any of this stuff here just yet, and you'll figure out why later if you do that. But down here at the bottom, you have your options for article to video, document to video, create a video script about, create a meme about, create an image about, and create a video about. I'm going to use create a video about. Then I'm going to select my aspect ratio because I'm wanting to put this on YouTube. But you've got all these other aspect ratios ready to go. And then you choose the style of text you want. So see if you select it, it shows you an example over here. My favorite, or you know, probably one of the more common that you see used on YouTube, the kind of shadowy black, white, and gold. I just think it looks clean. So, let's see. Let's make something about my favorite animal or creature, the octopus. How to make friends with an octopus. All right, let's see if we can do it. We got our generate video down here. Click on generate video. It can take it anywhere from like 20 seconds up to a minute to generate your video. Sometimes a little longer, depending on if you, you know, feed it something that it has to really search for things. What I like about this AI video generator, it's not generating video. It's pulling stock clips, stock photos off of the internet, assembling them, and it's also pasting the citation data too, so that you know you don't end up in copyright violation. It also assembles no more than seven second chunks of each different thing, so those who are aware of the copyright things and how to build a video, that's a good way to, to prevent yourself from getting a strike, especially if you're using content that people might have used on other channels like Nat Geo, Smithsonian, stuff like that. Okay, you can see it's starting to build the video over here. Alrighty, let's see what happens.
See how cool that is. Instant baked video. <laughs> I get such a kick out of this. Perfect. Perfect little short 40 second video to, you know, make a little cute nugget or knowledge nugget. So what I'm going to do now is go back and edit it. I am really OCD when it comes to placement, things like that. I don't really like this fine art in the corner so you can see it kind of zooms out of it, but I'm going to help it. I'm going to select this image back here and we're going to zoom to the point where you never see fine art. I'm going to move this into a position that pleases me. And let's take a look. Now you never see the little fine art that was in the corner of that image, but it's still cited, so you can see that this image came from images.fineartamerica. Now we have the next, and I don't want the dodo. I mean, maybe it doesn't bother some people. I just don't like graphics and logos in there. I'm fine with crediting, you know, the original, original footage. And I'm also going to move this. I want it to be placed more or less exactly where the other one was. There we go. And you can change that. There's no hard fixed rules. You know, if there's something in the image that you want to be visible, you might even place it up here. Who knows? I've done that in different videos. All right. So let's keep going. I can't help but notice. Okay, it's still moving. It's just moving very slowly. There we go. Let's call that video a wrap. So I'm gonna, this video is automatically saved. Let's say we want to export it. We would go up here and we'd go to Export Project. You choose your video format. I usually go with MP4. And then you choose what resolution. Now 4K, sometimes it will error out, especially if you're using, you know, content within it that doesn't qualify. So I usually go with 1080, something like that, and I always go for as high a quality as I can. Totally depends on what your purpose is, I guess. So now that we've got that done, it's kind of being hidden by my image, but there's our export as MP4 button. And I'm going to export, it kicks off a process over here. And what's cool is while this is exporting, you can actually go about your business and do other stuff if you want. So this might take a few seconds to export. So I'm going to go over here, and if you see in the very corner of the screen, we have new folder. It's basically a file path. It's kind of hard to see. When I go back out, there we go. Earth is full of wonders, including, there we go, it added. How to make friends with an octopus. There's my new project. So I can come back to it and edit it later and grab the exported version. All right. So that's, that's how to make a simple 30-second video. That was easy as pie, right? So uh, let's see how to make a longer video. Create a new project. I'm going to go through the same process. Now let's see what I want to do. I've been wanting to do this explanation of flat earth. Not that I'm a flat earther. I'm not. But I had this kind of hypothetical mind experiment. And uh, maybe it'd be fun to do that in this video. Where is that puppy? Hold on one second while I find it. All right, found it, copied it, it's ready to paste. So now we've gone to create a new project and I'm actually going to try document to video since this is a little bit longer of a piece. Paste it in there. Sometimes formatting can impact how things come out. <laughs> I've found that out, especially if there's no spaces. I don't know why that is, but I'm going to go in and kind of clean it up, make it a little bit neater for the AI to parse. Select my aspect ratio, and let's see if it can crank on this. Sometimes it has trouble with document to video. I think it's just if you feed it too much information, it will error out and not generate the video sometimes. Hopefully it can have fun with this one. might be a bit esoteric. give that another whirl. So if it fails, 
then what you'll want to do is you'll have to select the aspect ratio again because it'll default back to the Instagram ratio and then attempt again. Believe it or not, I've done this like five or six times before and eventually had it crank out a video. Don't waste too much time, but you definitely want to give it more than one try if it fails out. Now, it's not the end of the world. If it fails out, what we're going to do is feed it chunks of the document instead of the whole document. It's building something. It was way too short to have covered any of the material that I wanted to cover. There we go. It actually opened that you, you can never really tell how these are going to come out, but this is very cool because it, it really opens up with two big points that weren't necessarily right next to each other in my original writing, but it, that's a good presentation. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's quite a, a truncation of all the things I wanted to do. So what I'm going to do now, since I, I like some of those chunks, but I don't like all of them, now I'm going to try to feed it piece by piece. We're going to create a longer video by taking our cursor to the end of the project and then go back up here and you'll see this light bulb, Create with Capwing. When you open up your generator now, whatever video, whatever video that it generates is going to put itself right at the end of your last video. So let's try breaking this up into chunks. Uh, highlight it all. Let's open up some notes. And let's try Let's try doing one chunk at a time. Generate video. Now keep in mind, it's probably going to be a little bit redundant here. And this is where I'm going to have to go back and play video editor. Line up the next chunk. I'm going to only feed it about two paragraphs at a time. Oh, also, one thing that happens. See how we have two different audios? Every time you generate a new video, it pulls a random audio clip. So what you'll probably have to do is delete the ones you don't like, and you can extend the ones you do. I'm going to just pull that there. Assuming the clip is actually long enough, it should go throughout the duration of the project if we're doing like a two, three minute project. So let's see how it came out. Eh, kind of rough. <laughs> so it's kind of jagged around the edges there, but I'm going to keep going. So let's generate another one, and I'm going to do it with my next chunklet of text. Generate video. Keep in mind, I am not a flat earther. This hypothetical thing I'll probably put up as a finished video and link to it down below so you can see what I'm actually talking about. Purely a hypothetical, a fun clickbait attention grabbing YouTube video. That's basically the point of it. I'm also kind of playing devil's advocate like, you know, why would any powerful group lie if such lie about such a thing? I don't have to stretch my imagination far to figure that out. Come on. There we go. Not quite. Now let's grab the next chunk of text. Put my cursor down. And I'll come back and edit some of this here in a minute. And this is going to be something I come back and edit and actually do post to my YouTube channel, Freaky Fun Facts, just because it's kind of fun. All right. Let's generate another video. Boom. And we're glad we'll grab the last. <laughs> nice. 
little magician circle image. Okay, it's getting a bit redundant, so let's put the final touches on it. Let's generate the last of it. I'm going to see if it can actually chew the, the rest of it. Helping the AI out a little bit from experience. All right, come on, last mile. Big money, big money. Well, I'm definitely going to come back and edit that. So it kind of takes its own creative freedom sometimes. So yeah, it definitely mutilated my ideas. I like the way it presented some things, but I'm probably going to go back through and just paste what I have written into these boxes and gradually build the project. I'll change out some of the footage. You know, it, it needs to really be mine. But you can see how you haven't, I mean, this is a great start. This could have taken me hours alone if I had built it from scratch completely. Now I've got the skeleton of the video that I want, and I'm going to go in and make it mine. I'm not going to subject you guys to every bit of that, but I am going to show you some of the cool things you can do. So let's see an example of doing some editing. I'm just doing this as an example. So on this one, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm moving it so you can see there's a transparent rectangle. And if I want to change the size of that, I can double click on the rectangle. And now I can change just the dimensions of that. And now I can move it around. You can also, when you select your text, you have the ability to change the color. You can animate the text. You've got effects. So there's there's really kind of a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this. You can also go text to speech. Let's see what a female American sounds like. I'm going to come on. Where to go? Maybe the music is drowning it out. Hmm, I'm not hearing it. Let's uh, cancel. Revert. So let's revert that back. I just think that's a cool effect, but I'm not sure why it's not working. The motive for the live. There we go. Let's extend this. Motive for the lie might be simple. So, last thing I want to show you. Over here, you've got the ability to manipulate layers. I haven't even gotten into that myself, so you can go quite advanced if you want to. Then we've got repositories of video clips where you can search for clips, images, various kind of elements that you can put over the top. We've got our arrow things like that. So you can do quite a lot with this video editor. You got different circles. I think those are used for different things. You can use them creatively, like if you want to highlight something. Some platforms call it the end screen. Some call it the outro. It's where you have your little subscribe. There we go. Video templates. I'm going to search for outro. And there you can see what I'm talking about. That way you have your little video placements and your subscribe bubble. They've got lots of different templates to choose from. So let's say you find one that you want. Let's go into this one and you can go in to edit this template or we can search for this template. So blue, black, blue, blue background with stars. Let's find that one in our video editor. Blue background. Let's do a little searchy search. And 
if it can't find it, then we'll just go to view all templates again. Blue background. And it looks like there's a lot of those, but there's the end screen, the one we want to edit. We'll go to edit this template and it opens up a new project, but if we want to use this, the easiest way to use it is to just select everything. You'll use your cursor to highlight it all. Then you can copy. Once you have it copied, you go back to your main project. And so I'm gonna add this to the end of my little flat earth template. Go right here, little pasty paste. And you can see it's kind of busy. It added a few more tracks. And I can extend my music so that it goes through the screen, the title screen. And I'm going to extend everything so that it lasts a little longer because I think that's just a little too short. I like to give my, my users on YouTube time to see that. And, oh yeah, I might want to subscribe. I might want to like it. So let's see. Alrighty. Pulling that out. And I guess this little video clip just is not long enough to to go further, so I'm going to replace that anyway, probably with some footage of an octopi. Let's see if that puts itself where it needs to be. No, it doesn't. So I'll figure that out later. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, so when I actually go to YouTube, and I'll probably recreate this whole screen, actually, to my liking, you can delete everything on it if you want and add your own video, add your own backgrounds. The main thing is to get this subscribe template. When we're in YouTube and we've uploaded it, it will actually give you the option to drag the video coming next over into this spot so that it'll look perfect, uh, at least on the YouTube channel. That's uh, my basic tutorial of Capwing. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And thanks again. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Use my link down below and I will get a little bit of a kickback. Uh, Capwing does have affiliate potential. So if you also want to start digging in, making videos and sharing your link, you can do that too. Um, happy Friday, everybody. Onward and upward. Um.